Hey, asking for a friend, is my code good? Is the worst question that you can ever ask. Instead, you should ask if your code is efficient. And how we measure efficiency in programming is through something called the big O notation, which looks something like this. This may not make a lot of sense without context, so let's go through an example together. A common problem in computer science is searching. So let's say you're given a list of numbers like this, and I asked you to find me the index where three exists. How would you write a program to do this? Well, the easiest program would be to just write a simple loop that goes to each index in the list and stop once the number is found. So in this example, we got very lucky because the three is right at the start of the list and we barely had to search through the list. So in this example, we just had to look at one number. However, when we talk about efficiency, we care more about the worst case because we never know what inputs we will get. So the worst case for this example is that the three would be at the end of the list, which will force us to go through each number in the list. So in this case, we would have to look through eight numbers in total, which is basically the length of the list. So to generalize this for all cases where we want to search for a number in a list, we can say that in the worst case, it will be the length of the list. To write this in big O notation, we would just write a big O followed by parenthesis, and inside it, we will put N, which represents the total runtime of this algorithm. One easy way to remember this is that anytime you have to loop through each item in a list, the runtime of the program would be big O of N. Now, if we plot this on a graph, we would just get a diagonal line that increases as the N goes up. Nice, now what if the list was sorted? We could of course just loop through each item again, but now we can be a bit more clever. If you remember from the previous lesson, we can use an algorithm called binary search where we start from the middle and move left or right depending on whether the number is bigger or smaller compared to the middle value. And each time we move left or right, we're simply just splitting our problem in half. The runtime of this algorithm is big O of log N. One easy way to remember this is that whenever you split a program in half each time, it basically runs in big O of log N. And if you graph this, it will look like a curve and this is how my YouTube channel currently looks like. So the goal of efficiency is to try to get your program to run in the lowest big O notation. And here are a few more notations in order of fastest to slowest runtime. There are obviously a lot more, but these are the most common ones that I have come across in my interviews. The best way to practice this stuff is to go line by line in your code and specify the runtime of each part. So let's run through this example together. First off, we see a loop and inside it, there's a print statement, which is O of one. And together, this is all O of N. And this print statement's O of one. And this whole loop is O of N. And here we have a loop inside another loop. And it just does a print statement, which is O of one. So in total here, we have O of N squared. And finally, we have this last print statement, which is just O of one. Now let's put everything together. So we have O of N, O of N, O of N squared, and O of one. So the runtime of this algorithm is O of N plus O of N plus O of N squared plus O of one. So now we can just do basic algebra and add everything up. So these two O of N's can be added together. This can be left alone and this can be left alone. So now we're just left with O of two N plus O of N squared plus O of one. So when we talk about runtime, we care more about the dominant factor, which is basically the slowest thing in the equation. So in this case, O n squared is the slowest one. So the runtime of this program is just O of n squared. That wasn't too bad. All we did was recognize that we had four loops, a nested loop, and basically constant statements. And then after that, we just did some basic math to come up with the final runtime. And that's basically how you analyze programs for their runtimes. Don't get freaked out by this stuff. I'd recommend that you look back at some old code that you have written in the past and try to figure out the runtime of it in big O. And you should try to see if you can optimize your old code as well. Before we end the lesson, I just want to share with you a quick analysis of why this stuff matters. So let's plug some values of N and let's see how fast these algorithms will run. As you can see, the runtimes get super big as the N value goes up. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.